So around Baku, the Red Bull team was uh, looking better than Mercedes pretty much all weekend. So it was fairly miraculous that Lewis Hamilton actually managed to out-qualify both Verstappen and Perez and uh, get himself on the front row behind Charles Leclerc and the Ferrari, who did a, a, another great job in qualifying. But Hamilton was on the front row and then he led the race as well, passing Leclerc. So did the two Red Bulls. And we've got Hamilton, Verstappen, Perez, the top three. That then changes around in the pit stop phase. Mercedes maybe pitted Hamilton a little bit early trying to protect from the undercut. And for the second race in a row, Red Bull went longer, particularly with uh, Perez and Verstappen, and, uh, and ended up ahead of the Mercedes. So we've now got Verstappen, Perez, Hamilton, and that was the order for most of the race until lap 46, disaster strikes for Max Verstappen, left rear blowout on his tire, and uh, he's in the wall. From the lead of the race, heartbreak for him, red flag is flown, and we basically have a two-lap shootout after that. For Verstappen, so difficult. When you have a, a blowout like this, there's no warning of it. He's doing about 300, 320 kilometers an hour on the main straight, one of the fastest sections on the whole calendar, and suddenly get a little feeling from the rear. The car starts crabbing, and within a second, it's pitched into a full-on spin. He couldn't save it. Lance Stroll had a similar thing earlier on as well, both on, uh, on used hard tires and uh, both blowouts on the left rear. But um, yeah, heartbreak for Verstappen, a chance then for, uh, for Hamilton and everyone else in the field because a two lap shootout is so intense. The start is always the, the time with the most drama in a Formula One race, all the cars packed together. And for Lewis Hamilton, now back on the front row alongside Sergio Perez, who's gone from sixth at the first start to pole position with two laps to go. It was gonna be a, a, a frantic duel. And of course for Hamilton, Thinking about the championship, his main rival's out of the race. He's behind coming into Baku. This is a chance to make up some big points. But it goes wrong, and let's have a look why. So, first things first, you'll notice as the lights are coming on, <laughs> there's something up with the Mercedes. Right, so, you can see massive plumes of smoke coming from, uh, from the Mercedes. The front brakes are really red hot, and almost to the point of actually looking like they were going to be on fire soon. But... Uh, this is actually, you can get away with this. Hamilton has put huge temperature through the front brakes and um, they are smoking so heavily. But as soon as the car gets going and up to racing speed, they'll cool down, they'll get airflow again and it can be okay. But it shows how much temperature Hamilton has put through the front brakes, knowing that front temperature is always gonna be critical, particularly when Mercedes struggles slightly more with front warm up as well. Uh, you can see other cars as well, a little bit of smoke in there for Sebastian Vettel in third. And uh, everyone on the right-hand side is pretty much covered in, uh, in Hamilton's smoke from the brakes, so we can't really see too much, too much further back. But he's not the only one, but definitely he's the one with the most smoke, and it's, uh, it's quite alarming. But as we get away from the lights, it's a great start from, uh, from Hamilton. Immediately the smoke's okay, and he gets up the inside, and here it is job done. He's on the inside of Perez. There's nowhere Perez can go from the outside, and uh, Hamilton from nowhere, looking like he's gonna be third behind Perez and Verstappen, take a 10 or 11 point hit with fastest lap as well. Suddenly, he's looking like he can be in the lead of the race, but it's oh so short lived. As we play it through, lock up on the front left, straight on. What on earth happened? That's very uncharacteristic for Lewis Hamilton. So, to diagnose this, we need to go on board and see uh, what's going on. Now you can see Lewis starts with his left hand on top of the, uh, on top of the steering wheel here that's not usual that's not the normal place to hold the uh, a formula one car steering wheel you want to hold it with your thumbs in the thumb slots ready so you can do upshift with the right downshift with the left and the clutch paddles are underneath now lewis does this routinely this is how he starts a race and it must be because he's trying to get the clutch drop to be perfect so when you start you're on the pre-start res with your right foot you want them to be very stable about 10,000 rpm and when you drop the, the clutch, it's got to be so precise. There's no longer any easy mechanism. The FIA outruled it years ago where the drivers would easily be able to just follow a pattern and drop the clutch to the right point. So I think Lewis does this with his hand so he can find the, a consistent clutch drop, which he's, uh, he's doing with his left hand. The right hand's in position, but as we get away, you can see the uh, left hand's still there. Now he's going up through the gears and the left hand comes back and that's pretty normal for, for Hamilton. So there's nothing much to see here. But what's happened for Hamilton in this is not the problem of the, the brakes were overheated on the front. Problem is Mercedes, to get that amount of temperature into the front, 
they've got a magic button. And this magic button shifts the brake balance from around 60%, which Hamilton would have on a qualifying lap, for example, to about 90%. It's putting pretty much all the braking on the front axle. So uh, it, it just generates huge brake temperature. But the reason for that is to generate the tire temperature. It's the tire temperature that, that everyone's looking for, particularly in uh, an unabrasive circuit like Baku with just a two lap shootout. You need to get the tires red hot. So Mercedes have got a magic button which moves the brake balance forward. If anything, normally you'd start the race with the brake balance slightly more rearwards to protect from, uh, from front locking. But problem for Hamilton is about now he's managed to click back on this button that he wants for the outlaps and the, and the formation laps. He's put it on at the start of the race, which means when he gets down to turn one, instead of braking with 60%, maybe 55% brake balance, he's braking with 90%. And uh, he's then going to go straight on, and that is what happens. So how has he managed to click it back on? There are two buttons on the back of the steering wheel for Mercedes, and they are just in the back, on the top there. So they're above the, uh, the gear shift, and they're just tucked in on the, uh, the top by the, by the driver's index finger. Now, Lewis uses one of these for, uh, for this brake magic that Mercedes referred to. And Pete Bonington afterwards, suggested that Lewis probably knocked it with his upshift hand, which is the right hand. So it seems that it's going to be this one that we're, uh, that we're looking at. It's very difficult to actually spot. I can't spot where Lewis does actually touch the button because it's in the back and he's taking upshifts the whole time, which, which uh, knock his hand. But if we look at uh, the lights going out again, you can see what happens is Sergio Perez is coming over from pole position. He's got a bad start and he's putting a squeeze on. So he's going to come in to the left and uh, start putting pressure on, on Hamilton. So he's going in a straight line, Lewis, if anything, slightly pointing right. But then because Perez is coming aggressively across, look at Lewis. He's got to change the, uh, the steering angle. So now he's changing slightly left. This is also very early on in the launch. So he launches in first gear, he's up into second gear, and it's about now he takes third gear with some steering lock on, with the Red Bull super, super close as well on his uh, right-hand side, barely any space between them, and it's all a bit tight. And somewhere in that, Hamilton has knocked on that brake magic button. So when we get down to, uh, to the first corner here, he hits the brakes, doesn't look like it's gonna be too late, but straight away the front locks. And that's because the front is then doing all the braking work and Hamilton's not expecting it. He's thinking the car's going to be in normal condition. He doesn't realise he's knocked on the button and uh, that's what happens for him there. And he rejoins at the back of the field. And also when he rejoins, he doesn't know what's happened. So he's super cautious on the brakes, even trying to overtake the Haas cars at the end. He can't, he can't manage it because he's so cautious on the brakes. He's just gone straight on at the first corner. He doesn't want to go straight on and... and clatter into anyone if anything it was very lucky he was on the front row otherwise he would have caused a big accident with the way the car was having knocked on that brake magic accidentally he didn't really break any later than Perez either the start was quite even between them but it was just simply that massively forward brake balance that uh, that caught Hamilton out it's a really really costly error for Hamilton because this should have been the time where he had the win in the bag he had from the start here absolute control of the race he had the inside the Stappen's out this should be 25 points but from here with it all under control it uh, it goes wrong and it cost Lewis 25 points in the championship which could come back to bite later on it's not the first time that brake magic has uh, hurt Mercedes though this was an interesting one from George Russell at the Sakir Grand Prix he's coming into the pits and remember, this is a one-off outing for Russell. So he doesn't know all the procedures like the back of his hand, like, uh, like Hamilton does and Bottas does. So Russell's come in, it's under safety car, and uh, in he comes to the pits. First garage, which is handy for Mercedes. And George is super, super cautious on the brakes. He's really, really tentative. The team are quite late coming up with the tires. And George is very, very slow, brakes very early into this, but look, the left front is locked up here. Russell's completely locked up. Now he tries to turn and uh, he's going to go long and it's actually not disastrously long, but the Jackman has to go back. And that's despite being very cautious on the way in. So he's coming from the lead of the race, having been in a Williams all year, fighting in a Mercedes suddenly, and he overshoots because he left the brake magic on. 
He didn't take the break magic off. So again, Russell, like Hamilton in Baku, is coming in with a massively forward break balance. And, uh, and he locks up. And because he was so cautious coming into his marks, he doesn't run over the, uh, the front jack man there. And they get away with it. And uh, we all know how the rest of the race ended for him anyway. But um, it's not the first time we've seen brake magic. I imagine Mercedes, whilst many teams have this sort of thing, we had it at Renault when I was driving as well, ways to get heat into the front brakes and then the front tyres. Mercedes will now surely look at how they can avoid this sort of thing happening again. So that was a look into drama for our championship contenders. Lewis Hamilton and Max Verstappen neither scoring points. But there was plenty of other action and some great drives through the field as well. We'll look at the top three performers, how they managed to end up there, some struggles further back, and what happened with the uh, yellow flags, drivers blasting through the straights. McLaren weren't happy about it. We'll look into it more on F1 TV.